Good morning, everyone. <laughs> the scripture I picked out to read this morning, I think it kind of applies when I see our church family out here visiting and catching up before church starts. It's from Psalms 133. How good and pleasant is it when brothers live together in unity. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on, on the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life forevermore. Amen. We have a, a few announcements this morning. Uh, most of this is in the handout. A, a couple of things I want to mention beforehand is that uh, Kevin's sister, Marcy Brown, passed away last night. So please uh, remember Kevin and the families. This has been a very long battle for them, and, uh, and it still makes it uh, especially difficult when you lose someone you fought so hard. And a dear friend of ours from uh, our church in Slayton, they live over at Wilson area, Sherry Gicklehorn had uh, been suffering from the COVID virus and had been doing fairly well. And she went home and took a nap and didn't wake up. <laughs> so uh, it, the COVID virus is a real thing. We, we were so tired of messing with it, but it's, it's real. And so we just don't want to forget that and, uh, and practice as much as we can or our, uh, our good, uh, thoughtful social distancing and wearing masks when appropriate. Uh, it protects ourselves a little bit maybe and protects others a little bit maybe, but at least we know it helps some. So do what you can to, uh, to think of others, please. Uh, don't forget uh, our Wednesday night class, uh, classes. We have the uh, op style, uh, op camp style in the auditorium with the young people, and we have a really good class going on with Gary House here in the auditorium. Uh, he's a good teacher. I enjoyed the class, and I think if you come for that, you, you will. And if you got the energy, you can go bang heads with the kids and, and have a lot of fun too. So it's just a fun thing. We. Uh, we have uh, some birthdays, uh, well one today for sure is Angie Gant. Steve put a thing up on the Facebook this morning. She's not happy about getting a year older, but it's also good to get a year older. So <laughs> you gotta be happy about that. And, uh, and then Wednesday we got Riley Morales and Thursday we got Laura Patterson. I remember that day. Uh, Friday is Kevin Igo, Michelle Post and Scarlett Morales birthday. So. Uh, to go through the week, think about people. As God gives us each another year, it's always a blessing. And it's one that we take for granted until we realize sometimes those blessings end when uh, we stop having birthdays. Um, would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the way you love us. Lord, we don't understand sometimes when lives end too soon. But we know, Lord, that uh, the reward is great on the other side. We pray that as, as our loved ones transition from this life to life eternal, that you will bless us with the, with the comfort of knowing that there's only joy beyond uh, this life. Lord, please help us as a church to reach out to our friends and our community and to share our love for you with one another through acts of service, uh, shared meals, uh, just invitations to sit at home and drink coffee, just anything that we can do, Lord, to expand your kingdom, where we can use our talents, whatever they may be, to show people that following you is the way, and it's the way to that forever life on the other side of this one. Lord, please forgive us when we are selfish and fail you. We know, Lord, we're imperfect people, but we know in your perfection, you perfect us. We thank you for loving us, Lord. We ask you to bless our service today, and we pray that you will help us as a church to really reach out in our community and, and be effective and show us the way, please. In Jesus' name, amen. I did also want to remind everyone of uh, a couple of things that's in the handout if you hadn't looked at them. But we've got... Uh, the trunk retreat coming up 
And we also have a baby shower coming up for uh, Caitlin and Bryson Pendley. Uh, we don't want to forget those things. God bless you all. All right, if you would, let's go ahead and stand and we'll worship in song. <clears throat> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. Cherubim and 
seraphim falling down before thee who was there no Of sinful men, thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works to praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in hell, bliss babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth then glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands for victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of christ in me from life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man 
can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. He returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. <clears throat> oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. And I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways, and step by step you'll lead me, Lord, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my God, and I praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you, and I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your way, and step by step you'll lead me, Lord. And I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days. And step by step you'll lead me, Lord. And I will follow you all of my days. Let's, let's go in prayer as we uh, think of communion this morning. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for this day and we're grateful that we can come here and uh, take a time to, to think of the uh, body that hung on the cross, uh, that you sent your son to die, that, that we could live with you someday, Father. Uh, we pray as we partake of this bread, we'll remember that, remember what it represents to us as Christians. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray with me again, please. Our Father in heaven, we uh, we uh, take take this fruit of vine. We know it uh, represents the blood that was shed for our sins. We know it uh, is Jesus' blood, Father. Uh, we're so grateful for your love and your care and uh, giving us this opportunity to remember that sacrifice that was made for us. In Jesus' name, amen.
I know if uh, if you were here last week, this is quite different than what our end thoughts were, and uh, we can still partake of the fruit of the vine and the bread together without a great ordeal being said about it, because we know that this represents the blessings that Jesus and the Lord gave us. Uh, we have an opportunity now to give back. We know we normally pass trays. Uh, just we would like to, for each of you to remember that if you are willing and can contribute to the Lord's work, uh, the trays are in the back. You can do it online. Uh, but right now, just take a minute and uh, pray with me as we thank, thankful for, thank God for all the blessings that we have. Our Father in heaven, we're, we are grateful for the many things that you do for us each day. Uh, we're thankful for the material things that we're blessed with in this life. Uh, we pray that we don't, we do not take these blessings for granted, but we use the, the things you've given us to uh, further your word. Father, we pray for Steve this morning. Uh, we would like for you to speak through him and help us uh, uh, bring those things he says into our life. Uh, we're so grateful for everything you do for us each day. It's through Jesus we pray these things. Amen. Good morning, church. We're going to be in Luke chapter 11 as we start out this morning. There were several people this week that said last week was different. Um, throughout the week, I heard comments about the service last week um, from uh, all kinds of people, people that were watching online, uh, people that were here. Uh, there is something different. Uh, and part of what's different is we're looking, uh, there's a difference between religion and discipleship. Um, and we're looking more at discipleship stuff than religion. Uh, religion is about rules, it's about law, it's about a system that shows what we believe. Discipleship is about learning a, a way of life, learning a lifestyle. It's about imitation. Uh, it's about practices, uh, not rules and laws. And so we are looking at things differently uh, and we will continue to do so. We're going to look today, beginning in, in Luke chapter 11, uh, I want to look at this idea of prayer. We're not very far from where we were last week in what we talked about. I know it's going to look different, but in, in my mindset, we're not very far from where we were last week. And so Jesus' disciples... Uh, are with him and at the beginning of chapter 11 verse 1 one day Jesus was praying in a certain place when he finished one of his disciples said to him Lord teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples uh, so we know that there is a practice of teaching how to pray John's done it and now the disciples want Jesus to do that and so he, so he says to them when you pray say Father hallowed be your name your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Now, if you grew up in the Church of Christ, you know that we can read that, but we can't recite it together all in one place, because that would be terrible for us to actually say what Jesus said to say when we pray. If you're just listening to this, there's a, a, a bit of sarcasm in that, okay? We've made a lot of rules in our religion. He's not finished with talking about how to pray. Now, to continue, I, I, I would like to have three volunteers. Um, you're not going to have to speak. I know you want to volunteer, but dude, hang on, because you're not going to want to volunteer in just a second. All you're going to have to do is stand up. But I would like three women. <laughs> Gary quickly put his hand down. Three women to stand up. Lindy is person number one. 
Christy is person number two, and Mary is person number three. Sorry, the rest of you that wanted to volunteer, maybe next week. Okay, now I'm going to use women for, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, the story that I'm about to tell is about Lindy going to her friend Christy's house, which is a long way to travel, uh, because Mary has come to Lindy's house and Lindy doesn't have any food. Jesus tells it as men. If I used men and Arian had gone to Bobby's house because Mark had come, Bobby would say, go to Allsup's and get a burrito. <laughs> okay? Women tend to care a little bit more about food. Uh, and this has a little bit to them. So I'm going to use them because we, and I'm going to have them stand so that those of you that are here can look at them because it's real easy to get lost in the story. Okay? Suppose one of you has a friend. Her name is Lindy. No, no, sorry. A friend is Christy. Um, and Lindy goes to Christy at midnight and says, Christy, lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey, Mary, has come to me and I have nothing to set before Mary. Lots of compassion here. There's also some embarrassment, isn't there? If you don't have food to set before your friend. The one inside, Christy. Now, I think we have to play with this a little bit, and we have to think about what Jesus says here. The one inside answers, don't bother me. The door's already locked. My children are with me in bed. Now, if you think about this logically, if Christy yells that to Lindy, the kids are in bed with me, I can't get up, the kids are going to wake up. So I think this is probably grumbling. This is inner speak. Uh, this is softly spoken, but it's not real happy that you've been, you don't like being awakened in the middle of the night, especially for something as trivial as bread or an awesome burrito, right? <laughs> but you're not going to say that out loud. Exactly. These are not things that you say out loud publicly. This is hush hush, okay? So the door's already locked, my kids are in bed, I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though Christy will not get up and give Lindy the bread because they are friends, but because of Lin Lindy's, now the NIV says boldness. If you look down at your note down here, it says persistence. I'm going to use another word in just a little bit. Um, Christy will get up and give Lindy as much as Lindy needs to take care of Mary's need. Okay, you got that? Thank you all. You can have a seat. We pass over this story so much and we immediately think, oh, I know exactly what this story is about. It's about boldness. It's about persistence in prayer. Uh, and so that's what we preach on. Um, if I were to tell this story to you now to help you understand what Jesus is saying, what he's saying is, Christy is not going to get out of bed to give Lindy some bread at 3 o'clock in the morning because they're, friend, they're friends, but she will do it because she's nagging her so much. That's the only reason she's going to get up and take care of her need is because Christy wants to go back to sleep. It's not because she is just full of love. That's, that's what Jesus says, right? It's not because they're friends. Their friendship does not hinge on this. Christy's upset. She doesn't want to get out of bed. But Lindy won't leave her alone. And so Christy gets up and gives her bread so that Mary can have something to eat. At 3 o'clock in the morning. Mary, this is a really good friend. If they're going to feed you at 3 o'clock in the morning, that's a good friend. And so we immediately begin thinking, okay, this is what prayer looks like. If I pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and, and, and bug God enough, 
If I'm bold enough, then God will answer my prayer the exact way that I want it answered. And if the story ended right here, if Jesus' teaching, teaching ended right here, perhaps that's the case. But he's not done yet. Verse 9. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. I don't know that Jesus is giving some huge spiritual teaching here. I think Jesus is telling us this is the way the world works. If you ask for something, it will be given to you. I'm pretty sure Brent asked Randy to get him a communion thing a little bit ago. And what happened? Is that what happened? No? Oh. Imagine it did. <laughs> it didn't happen. But if he had, what would you have done? You would have gotten it for him. If you ask, it would be given to you. If you seek, you will find. That's common knowledge. When my kids were smaller and they would come in and say, I can't find my shoe, my number one presumption was they didn't look for it. Because if you look for it, you will find it. And they didn't look for it long enough. They quit looking, and so they didn't find it. This is not a huge spiritual thought. This is the way the world works. This is the way things happen. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Even at 3 o'clock in the morning, Christy's going to open the door to Lindy so that Lindy will leave her alone. Nothing huge, nothing spiritual. This is the way stuff happens. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be opened. Verse 11, which of you fathers or mothers, if your child asks for a fish, will give them a snake instead? Show of hands. Your kid comes to you asking for a fish. How many of you would give a snake? For those playing along at home, no, well, one child raised their hand. You're, you're not a father yet. Or if your child asks for an egg, we'll give, give them a scorpion. Again, anybody? Nobody. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I've always read this parable in this teaching and I said, God is, this is going to sound bad, God is the Christie character. God's the one in the house who has the bread. Is that what y'all have done? Is that how you have identified who God is? Jesus says, this is not the way God works. This is not the way God works. God is better than that. God doesn't answer prayers based on persistence or nagging. He answers prayers better than that. He answers prayers based on what the child needs. He says, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven? So you just said, God's way better than that. He's way better than that. How much more will he give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now then, we are going to park the truck. We're going to put it in park, and we're going to leave the engine running. Okay? That means we're coming back here. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And as we start, you're going to say this, wow, I don't, we're fixing to load some stuff into the back of the truck, okay? Um, and we're going to come back to Luke chapter 11 because we need to understand some stuff. 
These are verses that we've used a lot. Uh, this passage has been taught on a lot here in the last 10 years, uh, 10 plus years. Um, and it was this morning that I, I saw something different in it uh, as I was preparing to get up here. Verse 10 of Ephesians 6. Finally, oh, by the way, we were in Ephesians last week. I intended to get to this last week and didn't. Um, if you remember, I, in the middle of us, I said I didn't intend to, to go here, but I did. This is the part that I left out last week, and it's a good thing because now I have a different understanding. God's at work, uh, I think. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. We could stop right there. That would be enough. Be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. That's, that's a good teaching. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. Y'all have tuned out, haven't you? You're like, man, I've heard this before. Are you picturing it? Are you picturing the whole scene or are you, are you thinking about what you're, what you're putting on? I typically go straight to the armor part because the armor part's the cool part. And I'm, I have missed the picture. Okay? So now I'm going to be mean. Um, and, and for the sake of visual effect, I'm going to designate one half of the auditorium as Satan's side. Okay? And my wife is sitting over here. So guess what? All of y'all. Over here. You are now going to be those who have the devil's schemes. Okay? You are the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world, and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Okay? Unless there are some of you that want to stand in this aisle right here, socially distanced, facing this way. So if you want to come stand here, anybody over here is welcome to come stand. I need a line in this aisle right here. This only works with volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, Mark, you're right there. I didn't want to stay on this side. Exactly. You might want to move up a little bit unless you just want them. Everybody on video is watching your right ear right now. So <laughs> There you go. <laughs> We've got a puny line. We need more recruits. Uh, ladies, you feel free to jump in. This is not just a man thing. There we go. None of the ladies moved. <laughs> like, nope, three already stood up and they got hammered. Okay, now then. I wish I could walk. Spiritual forces of evil over there. These are the ones who have put on the armor. Okay? They have a job to do, right? Their job is to stand. To stand firm. After everything else is, is done, they're to stand firm. They're supposed to have a shield of faith which is going to put out the fiery arrows that you guys are launching this way. Right? That's what it says. That over here, there is a, an evil spiritual force that is very active at fighting a battle. And Paul says, you people that I'm writing to, y'all need to get ready to defend. You need to get ready with all the armor God gives you so that you can stand. That's a pretty cool story, isn't it? Here's the thing I've never thought about. Who are they protecting? 
You guys turn and look over your shoulder at this side. This is not the spiritual forces of evil. But they're also not suited up with all the army, armor that the Lord has given them. Correct? Because the ones that are suited up, the ones that volunteered and said, I will put on the armor of God, are in this line right here. So we've got the spiritual forces of evil and all of, all of Satan's minions over here launching stuff this way at this group. And we've got the ones that are suited up for God right here. Remember I said we're not too far from where we were last week? You see, the church has a responsibility to protect those in the world who have not heard about Jesus Christ. These are real people. This, these are spiritual forces. These are not humans. He says your battle's not against flesh and blood. So <laughs> congratulations, y'all aren't human anymore. You're not flesh and blood. But you're protecting people that are. The job of the church is to stand between the forces of evil in the dark world and the people who desperately need to hear about Jesus Christ. That's our job. Right? That's our job. That's what we're here for. That's why the church exists. Not to have meetings on Sunday, but to stand in the gap between the forces of evil and the people who haven't heard about Jesus yet. And to make a difference in the world. That's what we're here for. It's time we got about the work of the church. Yes, it is. And to do the things we've been called to do. And to do that, we have to understand our battle is not against people. And our job is to protect the people that don't know about Jesus yet. Thank you all. Have a seat. That's a, a much different take on this text than I've ever had before. That there's actually somebody that we're supposed to protect. That the church actually has a job. And it has to do with the community that we live in. The people that are around us, our neighbors, our friends. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Verse 18, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Have you thought about what the people over here need? They've got all kinds of requests. They need all kinds of help. We lost a great warrior last night. Marcy saw that. She saw that there were people that needed help and she ran to them and she fought valiantly for them for years. And she loved them. There was rarely a time that I called her and said, there's somebody here uh, that, she didn't, that, that she didn't know who they were and know a good way to help them. That's what it means to be the church. To know the needs of the people in the community and then to pray in the Spirit. In this praying in the Spirit means this is not about what I want. I, I'm trying to do God's will. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. <laughs> pray for those who are lined up beside you. I need to be praying for the person on my left and the person on my right. I depend on them. I depend on you. So I need to be praying for those people. Verse 19. 
Pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Did you hear that? Paul says, look guys, I can't do this for you. I can't talk to the people that you can talk to. I'm chained up, literally. I'm in prison. I don't get to get out much. But even then, Paul had one desire. Pray for me that when I open my mouth, words will be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Now, at the beginning I said we're not doing religion anymore. We're talking about discipleship. We're talking about imitation. Paul is trying to get people to imitate him. He's writing that the church in Ephesus saying, imitate me. I'm in prison, but yet here's my prayer. Every day, that words will be given me so that I can boldly, didn't he say that? Fearlessly, good enough. I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Paul's got the armor on and he's declaring to people, I've got good news. I've got good news about a man named Jesus who loved you enough to die for you. And we're going to stop all of the arrows from this side that we can. But he's the answer and he's the reason why. And so I want to declare that to you fearlessly and invite you, join with us. Take your stand against all that junk. And I think Paul's hope is that the church in Ephesus will say, I'm going to pray that for me also. That's going to be my prayer. I'm going to challenge you. Highlight this, put your marker in your Bible right here. I don't know, uh, take a, a screenshot of it on your phone and make it your background. My prayer for me is that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. You say, but I don't know enough. Did you not read that? <laughs> That words will be given me. You don't have to know everything. You're praying for God to work in a powerful way for the sake of those as you protect against these. I pray for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Go back to your running truck. It's still sitting there, I hope. There's a friend. There's a friend who has someone else that needs bread. Another friend that, that needs bread. Here's the strange thing about bread. When you read about bread in the Gospels, you're going to find out one thing. Bread is Jesus. We partook of it earlier and we said, this is the body of Christ. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. When we find bread in the, in the Bible, in, in the Gospels, it's referring to Jesus. So when Jesus tells a story about a friend going to someone's house in the middle of the night because a friend needs bread, what does the friend need? 
Jesus. And so now we have a picture of Lindy going and asking the Father for the bread of life on behalf of Mary. How is that bread of life going to get from Lindy to Mary? Lindy's going to have the opportunity to speak it, to live it, to be an example of it. She's going to have a chance to stand in the gap with the armor of God on her, protecting against all the forces of evil in order that Mary may hear about Jesus. That's church. That's what it means to pray. So when the disciples ask Jesus, how do we pray? He gives us a pretty good picture. It's not exactly how we read it. He's asking us to think deeper. And I want to challenge you this week. Let's change how we pray. Let's change how we pray for each other. The vast majority of prayers that I've heard for the members of this congregation have been about physical illness. I've been here for 10 years. I want us to start praying that each member, as you go through a list of, of friends that you're praying for, pray that each member will fearlessly declare the news of Jesus Christ. That words will be given them. So that when they stand in the gap, they can give others the good news about Jesus Christ. Let's start praying about our community. The ones that need to hear about Jesus. I'm not concerned about the Baptists. I'm not concerned about the Methodists. I, I am concerned about them. But there's a lot more people that don't go to church anywhere who are not having any opportunity to hear about Jesus. Let's be the ones that start. Let's make it our mission that whenever words come out of our mouth, they are the words that have been given us that we may fearlessly declare Jesus Christ. And then we're going to begin hearing our friends and neighbors say, I've got a need. I don't know why I'm coming to you with this need, but I have a need. And you're going to be able to sit and talk with them. You're going to be able to take care of some needs. And you're going to be able to share the bread of life. And it will be a beautiful thing. That's what it means to be church. Ecclesia. We are called out not to huddle together, but we are called out for the sake of the community, to reach the community, to protect the community. It begins with prayer. It continues with action. This morning you may have a need of some sort. Um, our elders and their wives are going to make their way to the outside of the auditorium. Uh, I'll be down front. Uh, if you want to come down and talk with me, you're, you're welcome to. I'm going to end this with a prayer, and then after that we're going to stand and sing a song, and you can make your way to one of the elders. You can come talk to me um, about any need that you might have. And we would love uh, to pray with you, uh, to serve you in whatever way we can. So I'm going to ask that you be standing now. Um, for the prayer, if you're able, and also for the song that follows. Father, this morning, I want to thank you. I, I thank you for speaking through me. I ask that whatever has been heard that was, that was not you will be forgotten but that the words that you intended for us to hear will be planted deep within our hearts and our minds, that they might take root, that they might grow, that your kingdom may increase. I thank you that we can be here in this place, and I thank you that there are people that can watch online. And my prayer is for unity. 
that we may be united, that we might stand in the gap united. As we face Satan and his schemes and as we protect the community that we live in. And Father, we pray that prayer of Paul. That whenever we open our mouth, that you would give us words to speak. That we might fearlessly declare Jesus Christ. That we might fearlessly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not judgment. Not condemnation. But love. I pray that you would give us an opportunity this week. Each one of us in this place. Each one that's watching. That you would give us an opportunity this week. To give bread. To share the bread that you have given to us. That others may have life. So Father help us to remember each day to be wearing the armor that you give us. Help us each day to pray for the boldness, the fearlessness to speak. And then help us to act on that. To truly proclaim your Son in all we do. It's through Jesus that we pray. Amen. You are called in Lord above all else. We place you at the highest place above all else. Right now where we stand and everywhere we go. We place you at the highest place so the world will know. You are a mighty warrior, dressed in armor of light. Crushing the deeds of darkness, lead us on in the fight. Through the blood of Jesus, victorious we stand. We place you in the highest place, above all else in this land. You are exalted, Lord, above all else. We place you at the highest place, above all else. Right now where we stand and everywhere we go. We place you at the highest place so the world will know. You are a mighty warrior, dressed in armor of light. Crushing the deeds of darkness, lead us on in the fight. Through the blood of Jesus, victorious we stand. We place you at the highest place, above all else in this land. You are a mighty warrior, dressed in armor of light. Crushing the deeds of darkness, lead us on in the fight. Through the blood of Jesus, victorious we stand. We place you in the highest place, above all else in this land. Above all else. For those of you that are fretting and fearing, saying, I, 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 I can't. There have been a lot of people throughout Scripture that said that exact same thing. That's exactly how Moses said it. He said, I, I, I can't. i got a speech problem. I stutter. Remember two things. Christ is depending on me, and I am depending on Christ. You're dismissed.